Hello everyone, how are you all doing? I'm Anessa Jepi, the announcer for the English broadcast here at Cosmos TV. Just like in 2020, during 2021, Cosmos TV, operated by the Multicultural General Welfare Center, is hosting the journey with Cosmos TV and Multicultural Family Rights Season 2 program, sponsored by the Anti-Corruption and Civil Rights Commission. In 2021, it is produced and broadcasted in seven languages, including Korean. In the fourth broadcast, we invited Nam Ki Hyun, the director of the Yongsan Domestic Violence Related Family Counseling Center, and we found out the actual situation and solutions concerning domestic violence in multicultural families by focusing on concrete cases. In the fifth episode, we would like to invite an expert to learn more about the current situation and prevention measures of child abuse in multicultural families. Greetings. Could you please introduce yourself? 네, 안녕하세요. 반갑습니다. Yes, hello. Nice to meet you. I'm Lee Chehi, head of the Counseling Center for Seoul Migrant Women. Yes, it's really nice to meet you, Ms. Lee. Can you introduce some of the activities of the Counseling Center for Seoul Migrant Women? Just because the Counseling Center for Seoul Migrant Women is a counseling center, it should not be misunderstood as just a place where you can receive counseling, but rather as an institution that offers temporary protection facilities as well as counseling. We have foreign residents working full-time as foreign counselors in Chinese, Vietnamese, Mongolian and Filipino. The other languages are available only on certain days of the week. Specifically, Russian and Uzbek are offered on Mondays and Wednesdays. Thai on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and Cambodian on Fridays. Seeing as how different counselors come on different days, we would appreciate it if you could consult with us on those specific days. Are there any particular cases you can share regarding child abuse incidents in multicultural families? The problem of child abuse in multicultural families tends to be a little different from that of indigenous individuals. There was a case in particular where a migrant woman came to Korea with her kids, which were later on abused by their Korean stepfather. However, they were abused in ways such as not being allowed to eat together or by being locked in a very hot room in hot weather and not being allowed to leave. I remember this case very vividly. So, there has been cases in multicultural families when fathers abuse children. On the other hand, has there been any cases of abuse where mothers target their children? Yes, I have actually received a lot of cases where mothers were causing the harm, but there haven't been that many cases of physical violence. Our counselors often deal with issues such as abandonment or neglect. However, we cannot say for sure that we are dealing with abandonment or neglect because many times cultural differences come in the middle. There was this case concerning feeding the baby. When it came to feeding the baby, the father saw giving the baby instant food and not providing a clean environment for the baby as negligent and careless. We are currently dealing with many cases where the fathers are the ones to report abusing to the negligent attitude of the mother. Amongst the many causes for child abuse in multicultural families, what would you say is the most common one? It is really hard to pick just one cause. It is a complex cause, but just because we are dealing with a multicultural family, it doesn't necessarily mean that the cause wouldn't be similar to that of ordinary indigenous families. Well, it seems that child abuse occurs due to the internal stress of the father or the trauma 
he brought while growing up. So we haven't discovered anything special about multicultural families. You said that there is a specific difference between child abuse in multicultural families and in indigenous residents. Are there many cultural differences in the parents' attitude and position towards raising their child? Yes, there are a lot of cultural differences. And that is true, especially in multicultural families, where the father and mother-in-law are invited to Korea to raise the kids together. So when both cultures coexist, there are many disagreements on how to raise the children. If we go back to what I said before, in Korea, fathers pay a lot of attention when it comes to feeding the children. So when the marital relationship gets worse, the opposite side reports domestic violence, while the husband reports child abuse, saying the child was abandoned and neglected. The cultural differences in a family where two cultures are present seem to create conflict. Amongst the child abuse cases in multicultural families, can you share one that has been resolved? Yes, there have been cases where the child was being physically abused. But there are many cases where the child witnesses the father violating his wife. So during the counseling, the child talks about how my dad did this to my mom with a knife. Based on that, we can see that there are a lot of cases where the abuse is mental rather than physical. When the child is doing well in school or kindergarten, heart therapy can be the right way to go. I remember this particular case which was resolved in a similar way. And I felt really happy seeing the child grow up properly. You shared the story where an abused child was healed through constant counseling and art therapy. What is the most important thing in order to solve the fundamental problem of child abuse? I would say it is common sense, but first of all, I think multicultural awareness is the most important thing. Then comes awareness and education on child abuse. This may come as a shock for you because we have been talking really naturally. But in fact, I notice this issue a lot during counseling. When I'm listening to a client, I often say, but that is child abuse. And that person replies, oh, is that child abuse? So they are not sure what child abuse exactly is. In theory, there is mental and physical. Just based on that, it is hard for them to know exactly what child abuse is. So I feel that a clear education or awareness on what child abuse exactly is, is very necessary. Yes, so... You said that it is important to improve the awareness and education on child abuse. Can you share with us any specific examples? There are many cases, so it's hard to mention them all. But for example, when a father touches the child's backside while passing by, and these minor behaviors can be defined as sexual harassment in some ways. And when I say that that is child abuse, they say, what kind of child abuse is that? Don't report that. I've seen a lot of these reactions. In addition, sometimes, even if the child's father is not harassing the child, he does not realize that hitting the child's head or kicking the child's backside because he or she didn't get good grades is considered as child abuse. But this doesn't just happen once or twice, but rather very often. I think we need something specific about the area we don't perceive as child abuse, such as thinking that all these minor actions are considered disciplining the children and not as child abuse. Yes, we really do need to improve our awareness, even starting from small things. 
Ms. Lee, what have you been struggling with while running the counseling center for Seoul Migrant Women so far? 가장 큰 애로점은 바로 오해입니다. The biggest difficulty is misunderstanding, and I'd like to give you an example. Sometimes, your husbands or in-laws, families misunderstand our institution as an institution that helps disband the family. However, no matter how much you explain that we are not an institution that helps disband the family, we become the main culprit after helping to do so, according to the woman's wishes, when she says, I do not want to live with you. Also, when children get separated and say, I do not want to meet my father, while the father wishes to meet his child, we intermediate saying that the child does not wish to meet the father. Then, the father reacts by saying, never, my child wants to meet me, you guys are not letting us meet. That's why many people misunderstand us and think we are separating children from their parents. Even if I explain that this is not the case, there are too many misunderstandings about whether our agency is filling a complaint with the National Human Rights Commission. So even if the migration institutions say that there are perpetrators who are responsible for disbanding or abusing the children, we are not in a position to punish them and chastise them as perpetrators. Of the many cases supported by our institution, there are actually more good ones than bad ones. However, if 8 out of 10 cases go well and 2 go wrong, the complaints go up and we are often seen as negative institution. But in reality, more than 80% of them are actually producing good results. In addition, there are too many areas in which conflicts are alleviated, such as marital counseling, family counseling, or children. I want you to know that these institutions are not disbanding the family. So because of this, it is very difficult to say that we are a place that supports a happy family. So please don't misunderstand. I see. Everyone, the Migrant Women's Counseling Center is not an institution that supports family dissolution, but rather a place that strives to create a happy family. I hope there is no misunderstanding. Ms. Lee, is there anything you want to say to the viewers of Cosmos TV? Policy changes do not take place overnight. It is important to take one step at a time and for everyone to participate. I would like to think that it is becoming more like that on the multicultural side. So even if it takes a long time or if it doesn't work out right now, I would be grateful if you would patiently wait and witness the change. Finally, on this job I have a famous saying, good women can only go to heaven, but bad women can go anywhere. So I say to you, I hope you all become bad women. Good women can only go to heaven, but bad women can go anywhere. That was such a nice thing to say. Can I ask you to say something supportive to the viewers of Cosmos TV? Cosmos TV 시청자 여러분, 구독, Everyone, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you for everything. Today, we were joined by Ms. Lee Chae-hee, the head of the Counseling Center for Seoul Migrant Women. I would like to express my gratitude to Ms. Lee for taking the time to come give this interview despite her very busy schedule. Viewers of Cosmos TV, as Ms. Lee just said, Child abuse is a very serious social problem, whether it occurs in a multicultural family or not. If you are or become aware of a situation where child abuse is present, then you need to report it. If you suspect that a child is being abused, you can call 112 and report it. If you know somebody that is currently struggling with child abuse, don't hesitate to call the Multicultural Call Center at 1577-1366 and I am sure it will be a great help. Today, we invited Ms. Lee Chae Hee the head of the Counseling Center for Seoul Migrant Women to learn more about the current situation and prevention measures of child abuse in multicultural families through concrete examples. Next time, we will invite an expert to find out the current status 
of discrimination against multicultural people's economic activities. Everyone, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, much love.